Hey, what's up, everybody? We have a new YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe right now. Leave a comment on the video. Share it with your friends. It's also a podcast. Three and out. Wherever you listen with me, John Middlecoff, Apple, Spotify, we have you covered. As well as thevolume.com. We have merch. Check out. I got three and out hats right now. Thevolume.com. Search the podcast. Buy some merch. Okay, let's go a little Middlecoff mailbag. Middlecoff, mailbag, fire in those DMs, add John Middlecoff, DMs wide open. Easy to get on the show. Is Trevor Lawrence the most overrated player in the NFL? I feel like a lot of the sentiment around him still comes from his play in high school and at Clemson. He had plenty of talent, weak division, and has still struggled. I don't think, to be overrated, people have to view you as good. And I don't think if you just pull a lot of people, they view him as some high-end player now. I think most people are just viewing him as like, something's off. I think if you just pulled the average like scout or assistant coach in the NFL, they would just be like, yeah, that's weird. Something's off there. He does not look good. Whether it's injuries, whether it's average play. But I, I don't think most people would be like, oh, high-end player, future all-pro. I don't think you would find anyone saying that. I would say he's a guy that's pretty consensus. Fans, people in the league, probably some players. Like, yeah, I don't see it. And it might turn out that he's just not good. I I don't really know what to think. I I do know this is a massive year. I would say make or break. If he has another season like he just had, I I don't think he's with the Jags after this year. I think I said this on the podcast yesterday. The NFL waits for nobody anymore. That entire draft beside him is on other teams. Zach Wilson technically still on the Jets. Like, give me a break. He's I don't care what Woody Johnson's like. If we can't find a trade, he'll be here. No, he won't, Woody. But Trey Lance, Justin Fields, Mac Jones, ironically, with Trevor Lawrence. I think if Trevor Lawrence does not get them to the playoffs and does not play well, he is gone. Do you think the Chiefs should draft a receiver or draft Sneed's replacement? It's a tough one because they have to pay Creed, Trey Smith, Bolton, and McDuffie over the next couple years. I I think they're going to take an offensive lineman. My guess is they take a tackle. It's a really good tackle draft. A lot of tackles are supposed to go between 20 and 45. I think they're primed to take an offensive lineman. So I, my my guess would be I can't see them taking a corner there. Uh, I guess you never know. You know, you try to stick with the best player available philosophy. But when you're a team like them, I, I, I think they try to circle their favorite tackles that they think are going to be there, and they take the best one who's available. That would be my educated guess. I'm a huge Vikings fan and saw the comment where Harbaugh said J.J. is the best quarterback in the draft. Do you think there is any chance the Chargers trade Herbert to the Vikings and draft McCarthy? I do not. Uh, I, You know, that's... Jim, we hired you to run the show, to be our coach, paid you a lot of money. We're letting you do whatever you want. But trading Herbert is not an option. He also said, he said that he's the best quarterback in the draft, but he also said that Justin Herbert was a huge driving force for the reason that he took the job. So I can't see that happening. No one in their right mind would do that. But Jim's sometimes not in his right mind, so maybe he broached the idea. Do you think there's a chance by design that NFL teams are more roster-centric, whereas the AFC is seemingly more quarterback-centric? The NFL, the NFC has teams like the Eagles, Niners, Cowboys, and Lions who have loaded rosters. And the AFC has elite quarterbacks, but rosters that aren't as good except for Baltimore. Do the front offices think differently? Uh, well, I would say that most of the star quarterbacks are in that side of the bracket, right? Mahomes, they gave him $450 million. Josh Allen, they gave him $200 million. Lamar Jackson, $200 million. Justin Herbert, Joe Burrow. I mean, th- th- all those guys got enormous contracts. So now Jalen did, and they were hoping Jalen became one of those guys. Let's face it, Jerry Jones thinks Stack's a top 7-8 guy. I think he's probably more like 11-12, but... I think they would. All these NFL, NFC teams would love to have these quarterbacks. And the 49ers tried to create one with Trey Lance. Turns out he couldn't play. Then they found Brock Purdy. 
So I, you know, Jared Goff kind of saved the Lions. I, I, I think there's everyone's on the same page. All 32 GMs agree. Like we would want Mahomes, right? <laughs> we would want we would choose those guys over the roster. Like, it, it, would you start if I told you right now? Would you rather have Mahomes or Josh Allen, or just some awesome roster, and then figure out the quarterback later? You would take the you would take the quarterback. But I, I think this is where all the variables come in. Eventually, everyone needs to get paid. Like I saw a headline today: Jared Goff. They're working on a contract extension. Well, what's that number? Is that thirty five million dollars a year, or is that fifty million dollars a year? So I I don't think it's philosophically any different. Uh, I, I just think sometimes those teams found themselves in those spots. Seattle had sweet Russell Wilson five, six years ago, and they started sucking, and they got rid of him, and now they got Geno. I think they got a decent roster. But it's just, h- how do you get one of those guys? John, just wanted to send this over. Uh, listen to you talk about Marv. I think he's talking about Harrison Jr. Not running the 40. I know this isn't the 40, but he was one of the five fastest players in college football and he clocked over 21 miles an hour more than once. He's definitely not a 4-5 or five guy. Here's what he sent me. College football's fastest players. Most appearances at 21 miles an hour or over. Trey Benson running back Florida State three times. I think he ran the four threes. Dylan Edwards, Colorado, two times. Marvin Harrison, Ohio State, two times. Troy Franklin, Troy Franklin two times. Xavier Worthy, fastest guy at combine history. I didn't say he was slow, but maybe he is. Some guys play faster with the ball in their hands than they do running a 40. Maybe he's just not confident running a 40. Maybe it's just simple. And I was texting with someone that, you know, knows he works in the league that just said that Marvin kind of does whatever his dad's telling him to do right now. So maybe it has nothing to do with like, he's scared to test. It's like his dad's telling him not to do that. And he's just doing what his pops is telling him. And as me and Colin talked the other day, his pops is kind of a different, different bird. So I, I don't know. I, I don't think I'm not trying to talk shit about Marvin Harris. I think he's a really excellent top 10 level prospect, but I also don't think he is when I think top five wide receivers, you know, I think Calvin Johnson, Larry Fitzgerald and Julio Jones. And I, I wouldn't put him in that class. And part of it, I, I just think those guys are on a different level. You know, Jamar Chase coming out, I don't know if I even thought he was going to be as good as he became. Ironically, the best receiver of them all is probably the guy that was drafted 22 in Justin Jefferson. So I think he'll be fine. Marvin Harris is going to be good. Do you think Justin Herbert will win a Super Bowl in his career? Well, I think it comes down to Harbaugh. And as someone who has rooted for Jim Harbaugh since Stanford, I didn't know if he was ever going to pull it off. And when I was on my couch during that Rose Bowl, I thought, this is the most classic Harbaugh game ever. He is about to lose to Saban, who probably has his worst team of all his playoff teams. And Jalen Milrow, that's who he's going to lose to? And that moment changed his career forever. It was not the national championship game. Washington could never beat Michigan, it turns out. Michigan was on a completely different level. Jim Harbaugh's career changed for me in that Alabama game. And now I view him as a champion. Like, I, I'm not going to lie. I, I thought there was a chance, like, you know, maybe he's just never going to win the big game. And when he beat Nick Saban, I'm like, maybe it's different. So, yeah. I mean, I think Jim Harbaugh could easily win a Super Bowl in the next five years. His team's not going to be good enough this year. Obviously, they had to trade guys, moving guys around. Uh, but I think in the next couple of years, I think he's going to have a chance. He, he's proven to be that good of a coach. And if they draft and sign the right players... Look at Andy Reid. They drafted and signed the right players. He's an elite coach, and he's winning Super Bowls. Like I think Jim Harbaugh's... Fuck, I'd take Jim over John. And John's damn good. Is that crazy? Would you take Jim over John? I I, I would, actually. I, I would take... I, I think most GMs, not factoring in, like, John's probably a little easier to work with, uh... I think I just think Jim's a better coach. And John's, I mean, it, we're splitting hairs. I mean, I'm not, it's not like one's number one and one's number 10. I mean, these are these are two pretty high level guys. Even though, ironically, you'd be like, well, Jim got beat by John in the Super Bowl. 
But yeah, true. The thrill and excitement of March Mania is here. And DraftKings Sportsbook, one of America's top rated sports book apps, is giving new customers a shot to turn five bucks into $150 instantly in bonus bets with any college basketball bet. North Carolina listeners, don't forget DraftKings Sportsbook is now live in your state. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code JOHN, J-O-H-N. New customers can bet five bucks to get $150 instantly in bonus bets only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code JOHN. The crown is yours. With the new hip drop tackle rule and general offensive leaning policies the NFL has implemented over the years, would it be crazy to allow 12 players on defense? If defenses were allowed one extra DB, you would be able to double team two skill position players as opposed to one. I think this would naturally close up the middle of the field and force quarterbacks to think twice about it without reintroducing the violence hits that would occur over the middle. Here's the problem. The league and the television networks want offense. They want touchdowns. They don't want Justin Jefferson or Jamar Chase or whoever to be irrelevant all game, all the time. Because if I had an extra DB, I would literally just cover you with two corners like you would, like you do on hunt team, or you just put two guys over the gunner. It's, that's it's hard. And that guy's just trying to make a tackle. This guy's trying to run routes. So the league would never allow that simply because they want offense. If I'm a Cowboy or Dolphins fan, I'm out on Dak and Tua. Both of their contract extensions can cripple the teams going forward. Both have a deer in the headlights look on them in the playoffs. And we've seen enough to know they don't have it. Very productive against mediocre or bad teams, but honestly can't say they are worth a bunch of wins as individuals. Do you think their team should let them hit free agency after next season? Dak is dramatically better than two, I think. And you can tell me any stat you want. If I had to play a season, I would take Dak without hesitation over to a Tonga by Loa. I hate sometimes, you know, one thing I am trying, not that I care that much, but I, I respect how hard it is to play in the NFL. I am much more comfortable talking shit about a GM or a head, or a coach, assistant coach, a coordinator, because that job is much, much easier to obtain than it is to become a starting quarterback in the NFL. What Tua has accomplished at Alabama, top five pick, even in the NFL, he's on a small list of human beings. But once you get to that position, we judge you based on the other human beings that are doing that. So, like, I've never heard one negative thing about Tua. Same thing with Dak. Like, these are super high character guys. It's easy to rip a player when he's just a fucking turd. Not the case with these guys. But ultimately, like, we're playing to compete for a Super Bowl here, and in December and January, Dak's blown in the playoffs two of the last three years. There's no disputing that. I mean, the defense was so atrocious, but Dak was bad. I just don't think, like, I do believe, like, Dak could get hot for a couple games. I don't think two is capable, if especially if they weren't the number one seed and they ever have to go on the road, of winning a big playoff game. I don't. I don't think it's possible. I think he's much closer to being mediocre than he is to the high-end guys. I actually don't think it's even close with him and Dak. If all things are neutral, all the coaches are neutral, I think Dak is a far superior player. And I, I just, under no circumstances, from a business standpoint, could I give to a, a large extension. Would I give him like two years, $40 million? <laughs> Yeah. And his agent would be like, hang up the phone. Well, fine. Let someone pay you. Dak, I think you're in a tough position. I, I think you're in a tough position. I probably, you know, it's easy to say let him walk. I think realistically, you just extend him, get it down, and just hope that he can get hot one year like Eli or Flacco. I don't think Tua has that in the bag. I, I, I really don't. Again, good guy. Would not want him as my quarterback at all. Honestly, I've been impressed with just I thought I'm not a, I was not a fan of him coming out. Is it possible the NFL is doing four teams so the production is less invasive? This way they spread the coverage over four teams so each team deals with HBO crew a bit less. 
Full disclosure, I've never watched Hard Knocks. Not my thing. Yeah, I guess. But I would doubt that's how the, the Hard Knocks, I mean, I think they would just put the normal camera crews with each team. Would be my would be my uneducated guess. Like, I don't have the breakdown of how many camera crews go to a normal Hard Knocks. But I can't imagine that, like, okay, we'll just send, instead of sending four crews, let's just pick a team. The AFC South. We usually have four crews go, right? That last year with the Dolphins. And now we'll just split up the four crews instead of having the four cameras there in the production, you know, the guy with the mic, we will have one crew at each team. I don't think it would be like that. Maybe instead of four each team, there'd be like three, but I'd be stunned if if it was like that. Maybe I'm crazy. Uh, last week, you discussed the inevitable downfall of the holiday card tradition. Unlike the other 99% of your takes on sports life, I have to disagree on this one. I feel like the holiday cards provide the personal connection amongst friends and family, often whom aren't seen in some time. I, I don't disagree with what the holiday card is, stands for, represents, and means when you open it to family, college buddies, high school friends, people, depending on how old you are, haven't seen in years. I, I, I'm in agreement there. And for some people, <clears throat> hasn't it always been about collecting the cards on your fridge for everyone to see? during the holiday season, just assuming most people would never even bother to print them out. Also, I've heard you mention Derek Ray. I love to know Derek. For, uh, I too have known Derek from Derek is the GM at Florida state. Any chance you get him on as a guest? Yeah. I got an idea about Florida state. My thing with holiday cards wasn't that they were going to disappear. I just think that the way of technology is our, Every bill when I was a kid came to the house. Every single one. And my dad wrote checks. Same thing with, with the farm. Like, every bill came. Now everything is on the computer. So, you, my mom has this. My brother has this. We don't have one at this house. But I know a lot of you have that. Are those, like, video kind of Amazon Alexa type things? Google Play, whatever. And they just rotate pictures. My mom has one that my sister-in-law just updates with the kids and th that's my idea where i think this is going to head eventually is stuff like that i i, I think that's inevitable I, I really do resident browns fan here after seal seeing the russell wilson deal go down i have a lot of worries for what we end up with watson when is the cutoff to prove he's good player before andrew barry and stefanski decide to cut him and fully rebuild the position would you be surprised if at all we took a developmental quarterback in this draft down the board? I'm a huge Jordan Travis fan, and I'd love to see us continue to take late-round quarterbacks and see if we strike gold on a long shot, like with Joe Milton or Sam Hartman. Yeah, I don't think that's a bad idea at all. I just, you could argue sometimes when you have, I mean, Deshaun Watson's the highest cap hit in the league the next couple of years. So you're hitting on players at other positions is extremely important. And unlike Russell Wilson, he has a lot more guaranteed money coming to him because of the way the contract was set up. I think he has two years to prove his worth. Maybe a year and a half. But I think it's very, very difficult for you to get another quarterback. So I, I think these next two years, you're kind of just in the boat with this operation. Now, if this year got really ugly and he played really shitty and you were losing games... Maybe it would only be a year. Now, I, I I can't pretend to know the financial ramifications, but clearly, given the amount of money you gave him, highest contract in the history of the league, $230 million guaranteed, it would be really, really ugly on your salary cap. Now, the good thing for Barry and Stefanski, I think it's pretty clear that this was the owner. So it's one of those, it's not like those guys were pounding the table to do this. Deshaun Watson said he was out to the Browns. And they were like, see ya. And the owner's like, what do you need? And then Mulgetta, his agent, you know, bent Jimmy Haslam over a barrel. Rightfully so. He had all the leverage. And I, I just think that it's one of those now, a lot of super rich guys, I don't know that many billionaires, don't know one, but it's pretty clear they're not great at being like, oh, my bad, I, I fucked up. <laughs> Usually they just point the finger. So would he point the finger at those guys? There was a rumor today that they were going to get extensions. 
I, that, that would be fascinating to watch that if this Deshaun Watson thing really goes up in flames, which feels more likely than not, uh, does the owner take responsibility and say, I led the charge on this, the contract was my idea, or does he just say, those guys screwed up? Fired, his history would say that. It does feel like they've stabilized a little bit. And I think Barry and Stefanski clearly are pretty good. So that, that would be crazy to do that. But rich guys are crazy sometimes. And they don't want to have an egg on their face. So what if you win six games this year and Deshaun just looks like an average player? They change the entire offensive staff. I don't know. I just I'm I'm just not sure he's any good, to be honest with you.